was like super busy times, like three or four days only interviews and between interviews go to practice straight out, not even looking at the ramps. And I remember first practice, I was going out with Ronaldo or or Levi Sherwood, I don't remember. But anyway, I didn't even have time to ask how the ramps was set up. So like, okay, nine ramp, 23. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, let's go. And then just out in a train. Of course, nowadays I'm used to it. It's like a normal thing, you know, when we go for a show or competition. But that time I was like super, what if I crash him out? I have to go but train with him. <laughs> it was like sketchy and not that much time to like calm down and think about things and watch the course and like this. Oh man, today is a busy day in the home studio. I've just finished recording the latest EFMX World Championship round with Night of the Jumps and TIMX. This is motocross. So I've been commentating in the virtual world of video games, which has been so much fun to be honest, but I'd much rather be hosting the real world championships inside a packed arena at Night of the Jumps with the esports as well. But I'm also stoked to be here and hosting this very series that you've tuned into right now, the Riders Lounge podcast. I'm Steve Sommerfeld. I'm just a washed up FMX rider who has too many harebrained schemes and not enough time in the day to make them all happen. And you can probably hear my voice is getting a little bit strained right now, but to be honest, the best medicine to fix that is actually a nice cold tannin Zepfler alcohol-free beer from the Rothaus Brewery. You knew I was going to say that. But actually, I remember last year at almost every single event I was hosting, my voice was blown out. I was struggling so bad. Maybe it was a cold or whatever at every single round. And I had Troy Mannering on the phone who hosts Red Bull X Fighters and Red Bull Crushed Ice. And he was giving me some tips on how to get through the three hours of commentating every night because he was just too busy sharpening ice skating blades that he just didn't want to come and fill in for me. But it was that icy cold beer that I'm sure that helped me get through it then and somehow make it to the end just speaking of ice i've been leaving my beers outside in the snow and we made our first snowman ever a couple of days ago and i left the snowman with a little mini keg of beer just for a laugh but actually you can win your own free mini keg of beer if you jump on the writer's lounge podcast instagram page and tag a friend who you think would like to listen to this podcast series but also that you'd like to share an icy cold tannin zapfler keg with. Now I've actually heard from a lot of you since the last couple of episodes and I'm so stoked you're liking the content and interviews with completely different stories in action sports from different athletes and one of the questions was to find out more on the social media side of things. So this all ties in so neatly and so perfectly with my new guest for today's episode who knows more about ice and snow than almost any other freestyle rider in the world. He was also part of the qualifying round of the first EFMX World Championships, and I'm certain we'll see him actually riding in the real World Championship Series in the very near future. He was a fan favorite novelero to win his spot at Red Bull X Fighters, and I was stoked to have ridden with him at shows in Russia, and we have since become good friends. He's one of the nice guys of the sport, and he's also completely mastered the YouTube algorithm with his annual video series, Dirt Bike vs. Street Bike. All the way from the freezing cold city of Turku in Finland, it's Sebastian Westberg. Are you on 4G or 5G there? For 4G, still waiting for them. But I, I guess they got 5G already around. But okay, this is so much better. It's like over 50 MBS. Yeah, yeah. it's like five times. Ooh, 70, almost 100. Whoa. Okay, let's run this. Hopefully the let's... phone will work. No one call me. 
<laughs> okay, let's let's go for this one. So this is about the fourth take. Um, yeah, hopefully yeah. this internet works um, because, yeah, like we said on the last three, <laughs> yeah. maybe the lines are frozen here in Germany and frozen there in Finland. Um, yeah, but I guess let's... I guess it's gonna work work out, so we can we can start again and let's try to rock it through now. <laughs> Perfect. Let's go. I'm not, we'll I'm not in a rush. I have all the evening. <laughs> So, oh, or man, we day. might need the we might need the whole day to get this thing done at this rate. Like, <laughs> when did we start? An hour ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Far out. Um, no, how is it up there in Finland? Where did you say you're from? Turku, the the old capital. Yeah, yeah, old capital of Finland. Yeah, nowadays it's Helsinki, but uh, yeah, yeah, from the south part of Finland. So, yeah. From the south, you know, <laughs> but it's not that warm than in south. You used to, be, ah, you're used to. Damn, it. it's cold. It's few, few degrees minus right now, and it's snowing now and then. But right now, it's it's like dry, dry weather. And you know, I think it's the first day in one month I see the sun. <laughs> so wow, it's kind, of, it's kind of a good day sit inside <laughs> yeah oh, i'm sorry should we cut this interview actually now so you can go outside <laughs> and enjoy the the good day for a change sorry <laughs> oh man so so it is freezing cold um have you already started getting the the freestyle compound ready for winter yeah actually actually right just a few weeks ago i put the rubber mats on the ramps and in run because as you maybe known i had a uh, my shoulder is fractured and I ripped some ligaments uh, like one and a half months ago. So when I went to the doctor, he said that try to take it easy for a few months and ride. Riding, you can start riding in January again. So I'm really looking forward to it. So that's why I put the rubber mats on the ramp. And uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully the there will be some cold weather to get some snow and be able to ride with the spike soon uh, hang on what hopefully it's cold weather and you get snow so you can ride you're actually looking forward to yeah cold <laughs> you know we're from finland so it's everything everything between rain and snow so right now when we don't <laughs> got the freezing cold and snow yet it's just wet and rainy so you can't ride with normal summer tires but you can ride with spikes but it's not good for the spikes neither and they're pretty pretty expensive tires also so you're waiting to the ground to freeze and get a little bit snow on the ground so then it's better to ride wow okay i have never done that before i definitely do not want to try that um so how how does it work you have to put the rubber over the ramp and all along the run up um i'm guessing you're fixing it in place somehow on the ramp and then it just covers the whole thing, like just one big long piece of rubber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like a normal in-run, like 20, 25 meters of in-run, like a rubber mat. And then, of course, same rubber on the on the ramp. And then, you know, it's like one centimeters tiff. So then you have a super good grip on the tires. It's actually better than with the summer tires on the dirt, dirt ground. Wow. So, yeah, but it's more heavy in, in the air, like flip. Flip bricks and stuff, it's more sketchy for sure. Okay, so the bike has to work harder. Obviously, the spikes are digging into the rubber. The The motor has to work harder to jump. Exactly. Um, you have to go a little bit faster. And also remember, like in flip bricks, you have to pull pull harder to make it around. But otherwise, wow. it's, it's good. But, you know, doing shows and stuff, you know, you're freezing in your... <laughs> I would say balls with fingers <laughs> in minus 20, 30 degrees, mid of the win winter doing shows in like a ski center or something. So it's that's where it gets hard. <laughs> oh, I bet it does. Whoa, minus 30 shows. How many of those do you do you do in a year? There used to be between from one to six shows, like in the super cold weather, depends on the year. Of course, you never know now from the next year when we got this virus around but uh, hopefully we've got some cool shows in the winter too and always the pictures is so sick because you used to we don't have that much daylight in the winter time or actually yeah. never in finland <laughs> but uh, the pictures is super sick because all the ground and everything everything is white 
So you can see the bike and trick super good. That's and even better with effects. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's so crazy. So, um, I've heard a couple of guys actually say they've they've tried out the spikes and um, and the rubber and all that sort of stuff. I guess the biggest problem you would have. Imagine you get a call. Uh, oh no, sorry, you said you wanted to go to Spain already. For yeah, this for year, sure. So I'm waiting to ride with to summer Spain. cars. Yeah, yeah, and after my my shoulder injury, also like would be more nice to start riding with summer cars. But I guess we don't have any flights to. Spain because we're taking so carefully this this virus thing in Finland so it's super hard to get get there I got like Norwegian flights they cancel it already four times I always <laughs> change them forward oh. and right now it shows that the first flights goes in April next year so oh, no, <laughs> I would right. like to go in January but it's super hard to get get out from here behind the seas so you've just um, well. So now your winter's wasted for the the Spanish winter of riding, which most Northern European guys do. So yeah, yeah. I guess you better get used to those spikes then. Um, do you do you buy the spikes? The tires come like that, um, or actually, have you put the spikes? actually, I got Mitas spike tires, and my sponsor Motorengas, who is like retailing them in Finland, they are building it by hand. So it's handmade tires with the spikes. So they made it good for me. So on the side of the tires, there is the spikes is not that long than in the middle, so they don't scrape the the rear end of the bike. So that's pretty good, and um, you know I always like to ride them. And you can do more than one season with the spikes because they are, you know, handmade. It's always better for sure when they know what they're doing. Actually, you know, I did my first backflip with spike tires, not in the snow and, and freeze, but was so muddy. Like it was like around New Year 2013 or 14. So I did super kicker backflip because I needed to ride with spikes because it was so muddy. <laughs> so wow. there is a... <laughs> So Always. your first your first ever backflip to yeah, dirt yeah yeah super kicker back to, or dirt to mud I guess it was. sorry to mud <laughs> yeah on a landing but mud yeah wow and had you planned on uh you know obviously good weather you're training in the foam pit you're about to go to dirt and then I'm guessing it's just rained like hell and you went oh I'm gonna stick my spike tires on to get this job done actually the funny thing was that we didn't have any foam pits in Finland. <laughs> that time oh. so we just went straight to dirt my my cousin hannah was filming and my dad was checking around if i crash or something so it was like always you know the the days when you're trying to learn something new you get the good feeling and then we go for it so yeah wow that is but impressive. Year, year later i went first time to spain to the yates park and there of course did my first long distance backflip but i also smashed my head <laughs> on the first try there but in the end in a few days i landed so that was wow. kind of more easy to do it on long distance and without spike tires yeah i i can imagine so, it yeah. would be yeah. <laughs> oh man good, so good old times yeah the good old days wow so right now i guess uh not many shows have happened um just like everybody else but actually I just saw on the weekend in your neighboring country in Russia, um, the Furs guys uh, and the Russians did the Pro Riv show in Moscow, um, a show I've actually done before as well. I was, yeah. I was surprised not to see your name, but obviously you've got a fractured shoulder. So Yeah, I, actually I was texting with Rasmus Johansson, an FSX rider from Sweden just a few days ago when I asked yeah. him if he would come for a coffee here is he going to turku or the north of finland because he was going driving with it like uh, with a van and sled with him so yeah. i was just talking with him and the, where is he going when he said the next finland and then russia so he told about the show and then i was also talking later with the russian guys like surprised that they are organizing this kind of big events so that's kind of cool <laughs> i don't know if it's safe but it's cool that it's happening something and the riders can go to ride yeah exactly like i loved it. that was my first ever show uh that i did in russia it was in the middle of winter i think in march maybe 2015 or 16 and um that was crazy driving there in the snow and how freaking cold it was um obviously the events indoors which is good but actually i saw this time 
I think they didn't have much of a crowd. I think maybe they did like a huge social distancing crowd. Yeah, so and it I wasn't the place for streams. Wasn't the place the same where we rode 2016? We both in in, in front of the Olympic the Stadium. Gym. This was inside, yeah. I guess. I think so. Yeah. So no, I, I was I was half expecting to see you there just because you know your neighbours and and yeah, you want to yeah. go see the Red Square like we saw about fifteen <laughs> times. Yeah, we know already what's that. Yeah. <laughs> no, and actually, and you were up against Nick Ivankov even in the TIMX competition, but uh, Nick had about one hundred <laughs> more votes against you on that I'm, game. I'm, I'm hoping for the wild card up there. <laughs> wild Get to card. Smoke him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess you do a lot of shows in Russia, and uh, yeah, actually been there uh, already. Yeah. Two thousand fourteen with uh, Sandy Medved and Martin Shank, and that was like where actually my like professional career started. When I saw someone flipping live and like doing long distance flips, so then already we lived like one month doing shows around there with three. And then wow. later, 2016, and actually, I was last year in August, also somewhere north, <laughs> in uh, what was the name again? I don't even remember, but somewhere in middle of nowhere. We were also driving like 500 kilometers with my truck without any signal and knowing if we're gonna get there <laughs> with a like paper map. So oh, but in no the end, way. we made it there did the show and when we came to the city we got signals and then again when we went home <laughs> 400 kilometers without signal to finland side and then we got signal and got home safe but yeah that's so crazy but i guess the good thing is once you cross into russia the the fuel's cheap yeah it's super cheap against finland at least <laughs> so is is freestyle a big thing in finland are you the only rider there or what what's the scene like i would I would say that I'm the only one doing it professional and riding abroad, but we got good, like young dudes, and I'm trying to like catch everyone together every year on on my own event. Com like it's like a fun competition to, at my compound. It's like every summer, I invite all the riders from Finland who wants to come for like two to three day sessions, and then I have a small five hundred people's like open event there to sell tickets yeah. and there's a little bit like uh, or other program and then we have like best best run best weep and best combo competitions and stuff like this just fun for the riders and used used to also invite my friends from abroad like there have been friends from russia spain latvia and, and uh yeah Kind of from everywhere, like the pro riders to meet the Finnish riders and also Finnish riders see the level, what's what's freestyle in Europe, you know. You can, if you're just watching my riding, it's not, you know, I think it's always better to have better riders around you than you, like, involving your, your, uh, your tricks and learning. Exactly. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And it's always good to have other influences there anyway. Um, how is it to put your own events on? Is it a is it a big job? I mean, it's at your training compound, but a lot goes into it. I'm guessing. Yeah, for sure, it's a mon many many months work always. Even I done it already. I think four four summers. Uh, it's it's a lot of work for sure. But I, I'm doing it on the side of all the practice and other shows. And you know, I always feel I'm like it's so much motivation motivation to do this event because i see how much the riders and the audience is enjoying the event because it's kind of like uh, there's like a lifestyle spirit around it and then we have a camping for riders and all the workers and just hitting the sound and swimming in the sea and then of course there's after party afterwards and you know that's like going to the roots where when you're looking to the old freestyle motocross movies and stuff so people are like having fun together but then the First, we do the riding in the event and, of course, yeah. the sessions before and have fun together. And then we have fun afterwards. So nice. that's... And, of course, the the other riders from abroad enjoy because Finland is so different. It's like what they say to me, at least, they feel it's clean and it's crazy that we can take a boat to the after-party place from our <laughs> basement oh. or place. So that's that's kind of like different stuff. 
you know. Man, I'm going to have to get up there. It's I'd, like, uh, the, you know, imagine the place where I come from, the small uh, village named Särkisalo, Finby, where my compound also is. I was moving until I was 15 years old with a ferry every day to school and basketball practice and stuff like this. So I'm like a real <laughs> countryside cowboy. Wow. Now. It's far away from <laughs> everything. Nowadays, of course, I have the apartment here in the city, but, but you know, I'm driving many times in a week there just to work on the compound and practicing and doing all the stuff because I got all my bikes and gear and stuff there. Will you go back to the countryside and live? I would like to, but wait, I will close the door a little bit more so Sophia don't hear it, but yeah, I would like oh. to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I think in the future to build a summer house there, my my parents and sister is still living there, and actually my 94 years old grandmother. So it's always cool to go there and grab a coffee and then work or practice on the compound rest of the day. Man, that's really cool. No, I I, I did the same. I lived in in the middle of Brisbane uh, in Australia for like 10 years, but I did it because I had to. I went there for university. Um, yeah, but. It, it was never really home. Like I just wanted to get back out and go back into the countryside. Yeah, but that's I'm how from. I stayed here also. You know, I was studying to a construction foreman. And when I did the the school, so I met Sophia and then we, she's not that much a countryside <laughs> girl. So we stayed here. I can also drive, drive back there to do my stuff. So, and also to do all the sponsor stuff and uh, you know getting ready for events and stuff it doesn't bother me to be sitting on a computer here in the city so it's okay yeah. for me <laughs> in the summer cool. i can be kind of live there all the summer anyway yeah i mean if you're riding all the time then it makes sense yeah. uh, to be there well actually i was i was looking through some uh youtube videos and i saw one of you test jumping uh, it was at the time a new landing. Uh, what's the team called? Sakinen team, something like that. Um, and it was a mobile landing, maybe 2013. There was hardly any supports in this ramp or in the landing. There's no airbag, and your first jump, you completely overjumped. Ah, it. was the testing of our first mobile yeah. landing. Yeah, you know, the, yeah. I think yeah, because that was our channel together. The name was Team Solo Freestyle. That time we got this team. Actually, we still got the team to, together with the professional stunt rider, Nico Sakkinen, who is also yeah. like living near to me. And we have been working together from 2012 or something. But this mobile landing, we didn't even know how to build one. We just knew how the landings and everything should be. And we need this to start doing shows in our own country. So we, of course, we build one. <laughs> and, you know, a few years later... After the few first shows, I guess some guy from abroad sent me a message on Facebook that, dude, you need an airbag there. And, you know, <laughs> I didn't even think about it that time. You know, it sounds stupid, but, you know, because we, we have been, like, trying to figure out everything by our own, how to do our sports and stuff, and just watching YouTube and trying to understand how everything works out before, you know, meeting other riders. So, yeah, I can... I can feel you when you watch this video, it's like how stupid it is. <laughs> but no, no not stupid. It, but we're making it working. <laughs> yeah, it just looks so crazy. And and I saw you just catch the landing on the first jump, and I don't know how you didn't break your ankles. Maybe you did. <laughs> I don't know. No, uh, I just smashed my hand in the handlebars. I, I think I know what, what we do, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason i was looking for your videos on youtube yeah. um because there was one i guess that got you was it youtube that got you there i'm just going to ask you about it because i guess this is where most people know your name from uh when it came out very you know in a in a big way yeah. was red bull x fighters uh, oh yeah was it 2016 2016 yeah Novelero, you were the 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 fan vote Novelero, is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I remember I was that time when I knew I was chosen to the competition to compete there. I was in in south of France doing a show with a sled guy from Finland, and got a call that 
damn, you won the world thing. You're going to X Fighters. I was like, what? Just two <laughs> years ago, I was in Russia with Martin Schenk watching it from TV. Like, not even thinking about the ride there. But like, of course, it was a dream always. But yeah. <laughs> How how did that happen? Because I remember it was the fan vote and I remember seeing all these names coming up and your name was just consistently on top. Maybe it was one week or two weeks or something like that where people had to vote and your name just kept getting more and more votes. Yeah, it I'm was actually trying, <laughs> trying to find the, the video I remember with Mark. Pinyo, my friend from Spain at the Aedes, he he uh, he filmed with a phone most of the jumps, and then oh, just yeah? did it. When I saw all my age, like kind of my age riders, filmed the clip and put it on the page, and was okay. Let's put this. Here is some. There was some jumps to the phone bit, and also some dirt jumps and like some cool, cool for like uh, phone clips. Put them together and. I see that I, I'm starting to get votes, but okay, let's share it on my social medias. Actually, Instagram and Facebook mainly. And then in the end, when, like, I don't know, was it my fans, friends, but everyone started to share it. And like, feel, I think it was because Red Bull, but they were thinking this is a big thing. Even they didn't know what's it, what is it about, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then people just started sharing it. And I don't remember it was me or two more like in the top who had so much more woes than many of the guys uh then i think people just saw a possibility to go in so i started feeling like from europe people i didn't even know started to write me that you know we want you to win of these two or three guys i don't remember so it was like feeling like what where did they even find me so of course from the red bull side and they were thinking, who is good to go there? This is maybe, you know, guy no one knew in that time. So maybe that's why <laughs> the guys who didn't even know me also went to my side. And I guess we also got good promotion from my social medias like Facebook and Instagram that time. But that time the YouTube wasn't that big. This came like the later years when we started doing like viral projects here. Yeah. But I don't and, know and what, what was the main <laughs> main thing. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I remember just watching him like, Seb Westberg, I've never heard of this name, but yeah. I guess I was in that same boat of I had to click on your name and see who the hell is this guy. Yeah. And then you won and I was like, whoa, okay. And I mean, the video was, you said it wasn't that good, but I, I quite liked your videos anyway. Um, Actually, I didn't even you, find it on my YouTube here when I'm ch- searching, but I know it's somewhere here. <laughs> <laughs> And so you've won, you've won the vote to get in. That's that's kind of the let's say the easy part. Yeah. The hard part is actually getting there and doing it all. What was the feeling like just arriving at Plaza de Toros in Madrid uh, with all your heroes? I remember I left Finland. I left my cripples to my dad when he took me and Sofia because Sofia came there because you know. They paid an extra flight ticket for a mechanic. I don't have a mechanic. <laughs> I'm doing everything by myself. So I was, okay, Sophia, come with me to Madrid. There's a like, small competition if you want to join me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> actually, she didn't know that mm-hmm. much that time. But I, mm. I broke, I was, I was practicing flares to the foam pit. So I broke my ankle the evening before, just jumping off the bike, super st- stupid, jumping to the air and landing on a bike. So we went the, straight the from the doctor. <laughs> yeah. We went right from the doctor to the to the airport, and my dad said that you think you can go with cripples to a competition of Red Bull? I guess if you leave those cripples, I can believe you can also ride them, <laughs> like something like this. And we left them. And I remember when we were sitting in Finner's fly, we got like three seats. And so for me and Sophia, we asked if we could like lift the leg up there, and if the in the fly goes, if the girls could bring us some ice, and she was holding all the four hours fly the ice there, so I get my I could get my like skate shoe back on the on the foot, and same was between all the practice and riding at Plaza del Toros was like 
Y Sofía va keeping eyes on my legs to get it back on the riding boots. And I guess no one actually knew about this, that, that I broke the ankle before. <laughs> But nice. I can later on the videos and pictures, you know, I can really see it because I didn't have the good stretching on the tricks and stuff like this. So, you know, wasn't... Wow. But, uh, was like a good thing that I could in the end ride in the event. So that that's what I'm happy for. Yeah, exactly. You got there. You made it happen. Even by, even with a broken leg the day before. I, I'm blown away. I didn't even know that. So yeah, yeah I think I never, it, it wasn't a Finnish media, but that, I guess it was better for me also that people don't know there. So they don't get that much scared. I guess Freeman <laughs> was also scared to see me riding there. So, but I was just, you know, enjoying it. It was just when you took the boots out, you had to take care that you get the, the, leg back in the boots again so yeah that's, exactly yeah i think yeah, every, be... every freestyle rider knows the feeling when you break something you're under the adrenaline and thinking like you know this is not stopping me if i can walk that's so crazy well well done man um as as the novelero um what what actually happens during the week leading into x fighters because i've been there a couple of times but I'm only there to help, you know, when I was helping Sheeny or Clinton or yeah. just there. But from a rider's point of view, and it was your first time, how how was that week? I have to say that me and Tom both talked about it later. It was like, I think because they started, started, this was the first year for the Noveleros. We were like, people, all the interviews and stuff, you're new, you need new photos to the Red Bull sites and clips and stuff like this. And a lot of more interviews than to the top guys or the guys who have been riding their years already so it was like super busy times like three or four days only interviews and between interviews go to practice straight out not even looking at the ramps and i remember first practice i was going out with ronaldo or or levi sherwood i don't remember but anyway i didn't even have time to ask how the ramps was set up so like okay nine ramp 23 okay yeah yeah okay let's go and then just out in a train of course nowadays i'm used to it it's like a normal thing you know when we go for a show or competition but that time i was like super what if i crash him out i have to go by train with him <laughs> you know <laughs> was oh. like sketchy and not that much time to like calm down and think about things and watch the course and like this so we got a lot of interviews and like doing the media thing Wow, what a trial by fire. Like but just... I have to say, like from the event side, they were like taking good care of us, of course, but that was like super busy. <laughs> so I think I would with all this stuff around this, like and the ankle and everything, I would enjoy to go there again. I had fun riding and fun in the event and meeting all the people, but I guess we had then we would have more time to enjoy it. <laughs> Even it's our work, yeah. of course. <laughs> Exactly. It is your job. It's yeah. it's what you're training to do to get there. Uh, yeah, like you said, a lot of that media, um, not much time for training by the sounds of it, but I yeah. guess you've just got to do it and, and get the job done. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it does sound good. Did you get to do some touristy things as well? Did you get to check out? I guess you've been to Spain before. So yeah, <laughs> too much in Spain and actually done some shows in Madrid before also. But uh Actually, we didn't do anything because I couldn't or I didn't want to walk with my leg just in the event, just kind of pretending everything is okay, you know, rushing from place to another. Uh, so just after the event was the first thing we did. We went to a water park with all the friends who came there to watch me riding there. And uh, even actually my mom and dad, my mom have never been in any of my events or competitions because I don't know if she's scared or what, but I'm, my compound is next to her greenhouse and she never comes to my compound to watch any jumps. But she flew with my dad there for the evening, was the e event, and then they went back to Finland today because they have to take wow. care of my grandmother. But, you know, they went there to watch it and it's like kind of cool that, that my mom came to the worst biggest freestyle motocross event to watch me ride first time. <laughs> Even That's I'm so riding crazy. every almost every day next to his greenhouse. <laughs> That's kind That's of funny. So crazy. Yeah, actually, my my dad was the same. My mum watched 
that was not a problem. But my dad never, not once, watched me ride. Yeah, uh, freestyle. But I, I so, guess we understand them. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, what was your favorite part of that entire event? Like, you put all your tricks together as good as you could with a broken leg. What was the the one moment that you'll always remember? I guess from that Red Bull X Fighters. I have to be honest that I think the coolest thing was like going for the main run in the main event like coming out from the tunnel that was for sure the, and that, then the next if i have to choose another one is like after i did the run came back to the pit and some of my friends uh, i think it was sophia or someone gave me a finnish flag and like then i understood that you know no one from finland ever rode in this event so it was like Super cool to make like kind of history in Finnish motorsport to be the first one. And then think about, I was like <laughs> repeating everything what happened the last days and thinking like, <laughs> damn, I made it. You know, even I wasn't the winner of the event. I was, you know, you know, I was winning myself to be able to ride in this event. So yeah, I think that's the two coolest going into the run and going, going out from the run in the main event. So- you probably didn't even breathe in the middle of that. There was probably 90 <laughs> seconds or two minutes yeah. where you probably didn't even take a breath. Yeah, when I watch afterwards, I'm like, so... I, I remember I was enjoying the riding, but, you know, so slow on the course and everything. <laughs> like, I would do... <laughs> I could do it, you know... I think I could do better tomorrow with this broken <laughs> shoulder. But, you know, it was fun. And it's like a milestone in my career, so... That's cool. That, that's awesome. Do you think with with that, obviously your name really got out there, that completely changed your direction in freestyle motocross? Yeah, for sure. And then also so like the the real professional side of it. That like all so easy for me behind the scenes from Finland watching watching up to something, you know, when I see it live. I mean the other riders, the event, everything. Like you're growing when you do this stuff. Yeah. Man, it's it it is awesome. It's it's just it's good to see that from that point where you've got to now. Maybe that wouldn't have happened if you didn't do X Fighters. Maybe maybe it would have. You know, I got a lot of like um, motivation. Of course, good shows and and a few competitions later. So later also, and landing my first front flip the year after, and like you know, it it has much to do in my career for sure. And also, yeah. like you said, you never heard about me. And now we have done some shows together and texting once in a month at least. And, you know, that's cool for sure. Exactly. Now, now I can say I've got a friend from Finland. Like, yeah. <laughs> I would never have thought of that before. Actually, no, I've got two. Uh, the web designer for Lakes Networking who sponsored ah, yeah. me. He's, he was living in Australia, but he's actually Finnish as well. He probably, really? I don't know. You probably know him. There's okay. not that many people cool. out there, right? <laughs> not that um, much. No, exactly. One one big thing though that this you know probably the main reason I wanted to talk to you this week is you've just released uh your new YouTube video and you were talking about this just before about the viral videos on YouTube. Yeah. Street bike versus or dirt bike versus street bike number 4 has yeah. just come out. Um but to give everyone a bit of an idea, you've got 125,000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, the second video you did of this, there's now four in the series, but the second video yeah. is almost 20 million views. The yeah, third I one guess. is 11 <laughs> million, and this one is already a quarter of a million views. What the hell is going on in Finland? <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is that it's not going... Or, or yeah, the video is going around in Finland, but uh, yeah, it's it's viral around the world, so that's pretty cool. This is also with a friend Nico Sakin and the stunt rider. And to be honest, most of this thing is about that he's such a good and cool rider on the street bike, going everywhere that no one else has gone. And also later has seen so many people trying to copy this idea of the dirt bike and street bike and not even reaching to this this views so that's cool that we could be the first to do this dirt bike or street bike like uh it's not only your riding it's kind of yeah it's it's like three to six minutes riding clip with but mixed with uh, some kind of comedy so there is like uh, intro and out, out outro like with a small story and this is like fully 
like side projects for us, but we're trying to do one new clip every year. And that's why, why we just released a few weeks, or I think it's four weeks ago already, the last one. And trying to go around Finland in different places where no one has been riding with motorcycles. But of course, this is not the illegal style. We got all the papers to ride in all these places, like in the second one on the fields and jumping our uh our some buildings at my home yard and then in the in the 3.0 we went to a ski center and like my my first schoolyard with the kids and stuff like go, just going to places that no one no one have been at with a dirt bike or street bike so like trying trying to make a clip that everyone likes without even being interested about dirt bikes or street bikes you know mix it with a comedy that's awesome so you've you've actually done the hard work to get all the permissions that's blowing me away yeah but of, of course it's about marketing and and our social medias also but like uh the filmer editor nico nico salminen he's making a good work with this he has been filming and editing all of this but then i used to in winter time when i have more time i used to strip them and think about all the places and make make like the papers that we can write and film there the next year again to make it like a good story you know the main thing in this that it's story from start to the end and then hopefully yeah. people enjoy them that's cool. So what's this fourth one about? I Just as I watched it the other day, it looks like it's uh, you're basically daydreaming. Is that the idea? You're yeah. daydreaming in summer and then the story starts. The lazy, lazy workers start to sleep <laughs> when waiting for the ferry. Actually, this is that kind of ferry I was traveling with uh, ah. all of, until I was 15 years old. <laughs> Yeah, like in this in this movie, the fourth one was like the idea that we we're riding around an island. Because I'm from an island also, so I wanted to script it like the feeling. Actually, just the first clip going with the ferry, where we're driving or uh, riding up, up or out from the ferry. So that's the only part where we go to the island. Then rest of the clips is filmed there and there, and then we're trying to connect them. We're like visiting, uh, what? let's see, there is a beach near us. There is this hunting house near my parents' place. Few jumps at my friend's compound. The broken old greenhouse at my friend's parents' place. And uh, then there is a downhill park near us. Yeah, that looked really Which good. <laughs> yeah, it's actually new. I wanted to connect this because it's the pl same place, but in summertime than in a 3.0. So it's the ski, ah. the slopes, but it's in the summertime because I got like two half friends who started a business there. So I wanted to connect this to the video just also for a cool place for our video, but also to help and promote them, you know. It looks awesome. And how does it feel to be riding? You're on your 450 and uh, Nico's on, what, what's he riding? Is it a he's 1, riding 000? a 636 Kawasaki Ninja, yeah, or oh, Chet okay. X. So, yeah, it's six, 600. And how yeah. does that work? Like, is he do, like, do you have to slow down a little bit to let him keep up, or is he pretty yeah. much on I have point? to slow? It's so hard in like in the MTB slopes, I have to go yeah. so slow with the dirt bike for him. It's super hard, of course. But then on asphalt and street roads, I guess he's going faster if we try. But you know, like this, like I said, this video we're trying to make it like looking some somehow cool, and the story is more likely these guys is riding through these places, <laughs> even it's versus dirt bike versus street bike. But you know, to make it like a good short comedy clip <laughs> exactly throw some mountain bikers not, in the not, middle not of that many crazy tricks in this video but there is the story which we tried to make from start to the end yeah exactly no it looked awesome so uh no if you yeah if you're listening to this podcast um load up the video straight away because as soon as you're finishing listening to this you got to watch it. It's pretty awesome. And actually watch all all four of them. They're so yeah, good. Yeah, you find it easily. Easily on my YouTube on Seb FMX. 
So perfect. And actually, for me, I guess the the probably the one thing I remember the most from your clips was that uh, the ice one where you basically cut a circle in the ice on a lake and you were spinning it around with the back wheel. Like, fuck, man, I don't know anything about snow and ice in winter, but that seemed like a pretty bad idea, but it looked awesome. <laughs> you know, I was before this three or four seconds clip, I was four hours with the chainsaw doing this circle to get it running when Nico was really <laughs> doing wheelies on it. And it was like, this, this is also like crazy to say, but it made sense in the end to make this ice carousel and doing the wheelie on it. It's not that crazy as a trick, but like uh, one year before I scripted this movie, my dad did one. I remember I was practicing with Mark at the Aedas Park and my dad sent me a video. Look at this. I saw on a, on a newspaper that someone did the ice carousel. I did one here in our own beach, like own one. And they were like ice skating there with my sister and mom. So I was like, okay, damn, can I put it, put it on my Instagram? And I saw like, it's getting so many views from my followers. Even there was not a dirt bike. And that there is the place where I scripted it. You know, when you're doing a new mo movie, I write it down, I make ice carousel. This is a viral thing. And then I tried just to collect them together to a movie, you know, and make a story around it. So that's how, you know, it's all the time thinking, like in everything, events, you're trying to collect the good things and cancel or take out the bad things. Man, it, it looks so cool. Uh, I guess because it's so different, um, you know, you see a dirt bike in, in the dirt, uh, you see a street bike on the street, you don't see them going around in circles uh, on a little ice carousel in the middle of a lake. It looked awesome. So do you just sit there in the middle of your long winters, you know, when there's no sun and you're just thinking of the next idea for the next year? Is that how it works or, or does it just come to you in an instant? It's like, yeah, in the winter time when it's, I just got the need idea, write it down. And when I see enough, a long list then i start to script it to a movie and then maybe it's changed later again and i get some better ideas take out the bad ideas but it takes of course it takes time and then you also need the luck to make it a good one you know how much how much time do you put into making these um these three to six minute videos like is this a month, or two uh, months or from film uh, scripting is hard to say it takes too long but filming is from three to five days mm -hmm. like in a used to be in a row is if we have enough good weather that every day looks same but then editing is maybe that's like three two full days nico is doing it but it's good it's also easier to edit when he's filming and like going after the script you know so you don't have that you don't have to think on the table at what comes now or like what clips should we use here? He just have the good clips to connect them. So the work is actually like the biggest, biggest work is done. The scripting, yeah. writing, filming, yeah. and then he collects this together again. Perfect. And then so, once yeah. the episode, But I would made. say like, it's hard to get back the money or time you're putting to these videos, but it's always like I say to you that everything is coming together when you write trying to write good practicing having different social medias youtube is one of them so everything is making each other stronger you know so it's like one of the project projects i try to do every year at least try but it's not the must do a shitty video if you don't have to have good ideas you know yeah no that that's definitely a fair call what would then be what's your secret to this youtube success is it is it the content of what you're doing or are you doing something special with promotion i know you put in some time with promotion yeah. what what do you think is the real success to it i see like with the viral projects is the idea and then it comes together with the high quality of course when you're doing it like a movie so that's important to me and i like it's mainly no vlogs or like send it big writing clips. I know already they are not reaching like a lot of people from outside the box. Yeah. But also this is super important to keep up the level and show that we're not 
you know, it's not our main thing to do these videos, but this is to spread our names and medias also to people who are not that into to follow your Instagram, which is only about writing pictures and practice, you know, because you can look, you can look it like a movie <laughs> yeah. or watch it. Yeah, fair enough. So it's more that it's this crossover discipline. Everybody can understand it. And that would be the, the you know, obviously the secret to your success. Yeah, but I have to be honest, like the one thing I don't understand, like mainly like the the millions of views of like Tom Pachez is in my eyes, he's one of the best writers in the world, but he does a full send freestyle motocross video with the best tricks in the world yeah. and he makes views with this i know i i would like to say that i think he's the only one in the world who can do this full send video which is also entertaining and it looks like also people from outside the interests are looking at you know it's it's not a story it's just the hard tricks and i enjoy i love to watch it and like so hardcore to see these clips but I don't know how he did it or how the people who edited or or uh, promoted it, how they made it yeah. <laughs> without the story, you know. How how That's just cool. um, pure freestyle can actually translate to everybody else to get those those huge amount of views. Yeah, when I do my all-in clips, I think maybe I can get, if I want to try, I can maybe get 10,000 views on it. <laughs> But then if I want to have more, I have to have a story that someone else can also watch that who is not into motorcycles, but watch it for the story, you know, then it spreads more. Yeah, That's what I'm trying at least. Fair call. Well, I guess then to think about going viral, can I just call this podcast episode uh, Seb Westberg Street Bike versus Dirt Bike Podcast? Do you think that'll help people <laughs> find this interview on a podcast app or, be. you know, to listen? Could be, could be. All right, done. The, it wasn't the biggest um, recommendation from you, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if I can uh, snag some. Uh... Actually, nowadays, the algorithms are using less and less the hashtags. Because okay. people started to, in the years, people started to do more and more of them, like having like hundreds of thousands of them after after each other. So I think like the Im- important of the hashtags is not that much anymore. Okay. It's. <laughs> it's harder to promote stuff you really have to have good content and people like uh, they they have to watch it as long as possible so then they share it and right now i think i haven't watched it in one week but i think it's like uh all the people who watch the new dirt park versus street bike is watching over 50 percent of this and that's a super good percent because if you think someone opens it and don't give a fuck of watching it, he closes it, and then the, you know, yeah, yeah. time goes. You get all these three-second like, views, oh, yeah. but you don't get one-minute yeah. views or the full video. So that means pretty many watches it to the end. So then the video has to be good. I'm just waiting it to <laughs> explode. <laughs> wow. that's It's another world. It's definitely another world. So yeah. I've got to remove, like, at least 50 of my hashtags from every post now. <laughs> I think it's not not putting down it but they don't have that much sense anymore than before. That's why if you look at the Instagram posts and people who have a lot of followers, they're actually not using that much hashtags anymore. I don't know if you have seen it, but they are start, they are just r- writing like longer texts. So the texts under the picture or video, it's like a longer, <laughs> uh-huh. longer story. Okay. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense, to be honest, because yeah. the text that goes in anyway you know, Google and YouTube and everyone that uh, yeah. puts it all in and indexes that for searches, they're, they're just using But I guess, like, it's so easy to read and study all this stuff when you're traveling and, you know, doing all the other stuff, like doing editing videos or something on a computer or traveling or flying. You can always read about social media. And it's, you know, I think it makes sense to study it a little bit and also understand why people watch and what they want to watch. Because I feel like, it's going more and more <laughs> to the social media. So, yeah. But of course, I, I really look forward for January to start writing full again. But there comes the content with doing it. So <laughs> that's cool. That's it. No, that's awesome. Well, what is a day in the life of Sebastian Westberg? What does that look like? Are you 
are you trying to ride all day and that's all you're thinking about or are you on the computer doing a lot of this work and sponsors and promo and and thinking of ideas what what is a normal day like right now the last two months it's pretty much running between the gym and office at home or just having team meetings or real meetings with next year's sponsors i'm trying to like figure out everything for january and uh yeah then just waiting to get to practice if i'm not riding home i'm traveling to spain in january and then there i'm like full-time freestyle bum <laughs> riding a few, few or one one time a day every day having maybe one break day in a week but uh yeah home like summertime when we can ride full at home i think it's like two sessions between that i'm working on the compound and pretty much using all the daylight to be in on the compound and practicing or welding some new ramps or stuff like this man if you know i'm also all the time following and waiting that night which jumps gets back in real life also we need to get the new ramps there I, <laughs> you know at the compound this is to practice. exactly right that's that's what we need to be doing man you're just gonna have to keep welding and just bring them all down on some trailers that would be awesome exactly so one of those big things that you know you're talking about with building ramps um i know you are not scared to try different tricks in the foam pit you've landed front flips to dirt and not even to dirt onto your mobile landing um, <laughs> yes. i saw the video of you i think was it the first front flip you did was at a show on the landing and i think you might have even washed out a little bit on the landing but actually the first event where i sent my front flip in the event was uh i don't know i have done it on five or six events already i guess front flip on mobile and dirt but uh the first one in the event was was home at seb fmx fest and i it was kind of funny because no one of the riders even knew it and i was had think about it like okay That's a few weeks ago funny. i did the phone pit why not yeah and it was like no one knew about it but uh then i put the the cheater part on my ramp and just in the end of the show i said like you know if if people want to see the first front flip in finland now i can show it and just you know full send it with, without gear in the t-shirt and you know i can't fuck this up because it's my own event no way <laughs> and i see sophia crying down of the landing like what is he doing now like okay don't fuck this up Seb. and just fully send it and perfect so that was cool to do it in my own event on my home ground so yeah. <laughs> later i did it a mobile landing and some dirt landings in the shows but whoa uh there's a lot to unpack there so you hadn't planned really to do it or at least sophia didn't even know you were going to do this actually no one no one knew because i knew there I was some just the kind of joined. argument coming if i told about it <laughs> oh my god i thought you meant just the crowd didn't know but even oh no, even no, no. girlfriend didn't know she i'm surprised she hasn't killed you not yet so okay that's that's one thing the other thing uh did i understand correctly you, you had to put on the the cheetah mechanism did you have to bolt it, this onto the like a no i, I built the first yeah the first uh like prototype i made which was on this ramp i made it like with the axle so i just took it out and and uh put the cheetah ramp on place and then put the axle through it was like kind of easy to take it out and if i didn't want to use the cheater part then i just put the plywood on it and it was a normal eight like radius eight ramp huh okay so yeah Jewel. that's how i actually build a new the show ramp also with the same style but it's like better built wow so you've got a dual purpose ramp you can turn up to any show do a normal show and then yeah. stick the the uh the axle through um and get the the rocker on and, and make it into a front flip cheetah ramp yeah wow well done i didn't expect yeah, that but it's more easy to travel with one ramp if you have to do a front flip in the show or whatever you know you just need to pull one ramp with you and you can use it for the normal show it takes a while to take out one part and then just put the axle through and have the cheater part there huh. 
hey, you have a lot of time up there in Finland in winter to be <laughs> thinking of uh, the ramp build to make it easier to take a ramp to a show. Oh, my God. That is yeah, crazy. of course. That's the thing. Like, I, I have to be honest that I enjoy most to go shows abroad. Someone brings you the bike. I just do my mechanic stuff to put my parts on. Someone else have built the ramp and landing. I can just ride. You know, that's the life. But back home here, you have to do all the work by yourself. Even had to take my truck, li- truck license in the start to be able to <laughs> drive the mobile landing truck. You can't do shows without your landing. So, yeah, you got to yeah. get a truck license. Man, that thing, things aren't that easy when you're doing it yourself. Yeah. So you've got the front flip down. Um, I know you're not scared to try a double backflip. Um, you've put a lot of videos of that up over the time. Have you done the double to dirt or is that still just a foam pit trick for now? I feel like I, I got it dialed. Oh, yeah? So I want to do it when the snow melts, not with the spike tires. This trick I'm not going <laughs> to do with spike tires, I promise. Or I don't know. But anyway, let's see. Will you uh, but I tried Sophia? it. Will you tell Sophia before you do the double? <laughs> I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> anyway, she will. Let's see when you put out this if she hears it. But yeah, uh, yes, I bought an airbag mainly for the double flip to start doing them on shows for her own landing. So uh, I tried it once at home to the airbag, and I was con- I was landing on both wheels, but I guess my rotation was a little bit too fast. So somehow. Because I still had the broken right wrist, the scapoid ball was broken oh. that season last year. I now I did the surgery and it's okay already. But uh, so I kind of whiskey throttled in the landing, so then the bike flew like a third flip. But I landed on the wheels, yeah. but then I just slipped out from the landing. So it was kind of good, but you know I just have to finish it. As as bad as it was, it was still good. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I'm starting. So in phone bit, I, I got it dialed, and I guess even better now when my hand is like fixed. So yeah, and right now been two months just hitting the gym. So you know, I feel like even the coronavirus twenty one will be be the year for sure. Got pretty much shit dialed that year, so I think it will be good. Man, um. That that's crazy. <laughs> I'm guessing then you're working on some other tricks, but you're probably not going to tell us here, are you? Or, or can we <laughs> no, get... for sure. Ah, damn it! I thought I was going to. Uh, you know, the the bad thing is that the foam pit is freezing for the winter, so you can't jump to the foam pit. That's the only bad thing for practicing new stuff. But you can at least ride and keep the riding level like normal. But then in Spain, of course, in the Aedes Park is the best place to be, in my opinion. And I got the other bike there. So, and there I got Mark and Navas, both brothers and everyone riding. And of course, meeting a lot of other riders during the winter. So that's good. You can ride with, some, ride with summer tires and hit the foam pit. So I think that's all you need for practicing practicing new stuff. Yeah, that's... And you see, they have the new quarter pipe also. Yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. Well, I, I actually, I interviewed Navas. He was the first guy I interviewed for this podcast. Um, we were talking about how he has the the compound down there in their town of Yeda in Spain and, you know, guys like yourself coming down for the that winter time and getting the training in and how good it is, even for them, like for those guys to have you coming and there's always this new influence and different people riding and, and everybody's tricks just go through the roof for that few months. Yeah, I think everyone has like their own good like someone does one trick better than the other even you're on the same level whatever competing or not but you can always learn from each other to what's the different styles and stuff like this yeah that's it exactly and that's i mean it's always the best way to learn you watch somebody else oh you know maybe not it's not competition but you just want to try and do better and yeah ah uh, the the things you could do down in spain but i guess you're not getting a flight this year at this point but uh, something that seems to be coming through a lot in in what you're saying uh with riding you you'd go to do this ah uh, but you've got a broken leg ah uh, you've got a broken wrist <laughs> uh, and now you've got a broken shoulder right now you seem to have a fair few injuries is this because you're doing front flips without telling people and uh you know getting ready for <laughs> x fighters and you crash on a flare and yeah. What what's going it's on? Now, it's now and then. It's now and then, but it, it it always sounds more when I say like you know when you're riding 
or ending the season, riding to the end of the season with some injury. And then I try always to, if, if it's possible, to end the season good and then do it when it starts to rain and snow. So fix myself. You, you time your injuries? It's kind of that, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, actually I'm trying to. Trying to <laughs> sound stupid, but <laughs> but I'm trying to time them. Okay. Then I lose less. I lose less time. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, I was always stupid and had my injuries at the, yeah, at the worst time, I guess. I mean, like most of the riders on the world right now would like hope to be injured this year, so they could say that ah, I was injured. I couldn't do any shows, <laughs> competitions. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, I was just talking to Pat Bowden the other day. Uh, he broke his. I think it was his wrist. Um, at the start yeah. of the year, um, so or maybe it was at the end of last year. I can't remember, but basically he's been eleven months out of action, and he's just got- yeah now hitting the biggest jumps again. <laughs> exactly. So this was the year for him to be out of action, and I remember he was yeah. pissed at the start of the year that he, you know, was possibly going to miss the the world championships. Um, in yeah. the end, he did, but so did everybody else. So. It yeah. kind of didn't matter. It was a good time to be injured for sure. Exactly. Um, so in 2020, we have realized pretty quickly without events, all freestyle riders and anybody in, in events need to go get a real job uh, because we are lucky in what we do that we can ride shows mm-hmm. and, and have fun and we can earn a living. But when that all comes to a stop, what if you weren't doing freestyle motocross, what would you be doing in your life? I think you said something about a construction manager. You, you, did. yeah, I did. I did actually construction foreman in school in the university. So I got the papers to be the boss of the buildings. <laughs> but uh, you know, as I'm all in the freestyle, also I'm welding and building everything by myself. I has I when the corona started, I bought a small apartment to fix it and rent it out. And then also now later, when just before my uh, few months before my shoulder injury, I also bought, bought a, one another apartment and fixed it. And now I actually sold it a few days ago. So I have been trying to work a little bit on the construction by my own, just to like make some cash in case there doesn't come any shows or competitions in the near future. But that has been like a good good possibility also during this time but i guess it's it has to dump some if it's not in the construction i guess and i wouldn't ride or i wouldn't feel like the motivation anymore i would work with events i think so you but the events also has a lot of to do with the construction so yeah so you're gonna stay in events you think now you, you've been doing it for so long as a professional athlete probably when you're done you'll still be in events I feel so because you also learn when you're traveling and doing different events you see the like I said earlier the good and bad things and then you just pick like in a video or social media you pick the good things and leave out the bad things so that's kind of easy when you see a lot you know from this riding as a professional athlete exactly the the travel side of things uh just a quick one off topic what's your favorite place that you've ever been to or the favorite place you've ridden a show at I think one of the coolest shows has been in in Moscow when we did the same where you also were ah, when we were the, rolling. The, uh, we were like eight eight riders or something, I think. Yeah. Around the world, sled and uh, in quad and freestyle motocross. So I think that was one of the coolest, and also that everyone knew each other was like a big show with a lot of friends. <laughs> I think that was one of the coolest. Oh wow. I'm I'm stoked you said that actually. I I always think like that was so cool that we rode in front of that Olympic Stadium, but in front of that iconic uh Russian uh I think it's the Moscow State University, one of the seven sisters buildings, which just looked so yeah. iconic for Russia. Yeah, that's true. And there we were doing a show. And actually I remember that event. Um I think there was supposed to be like a huge event, maybe 30 minutes from Moscow. Um, and it was completely rained out. There was a huge. Yeah, that was, I was actually invited to do speed and style there also. And I know some of the writers, I don't remember, was it Bryce Hudson or 
crew from America. They even flew there. Shaney was there also. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but nothing happened. So uh, yeah, that was a shame. But I think it was the the show was organized by the same guys as X Fighters. So it was Tess and the people who was going to do it. Yeah. But I think it was a shame that the weather was so shitty. Yeah, exactly. And we were somehow we could see the rain all around us in Moscow, but right where we were, we somehow did that show. And that was, that was one of the best shows I'd ever done. Mm -hmm. was... Yeah, it was cool. Cool for sure. But shame also the rain that I guess there was going to be so much more people if we didn't get the rain before. Yeah. I remember or near. what it was 20 minutes before the show and there was still nobody even at the event. And then magically, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know how many thousands of people just. Yeah, but Russia is up. it's it's crazy. <laughs> it was that was awesome. I I couldn't believe it. So that was that was definitely one of those shows that I'll I'll never forget. So it's crazy that you said that too. Uh, that was yeah, but it was, there was something with this show. It was cool for sure. Man, good times. Hopefully, we get to go back to Russia again soon. I I've been back. Times yep. to judge for the the FMX championships. Hopefully, you'll be back there riding. Uh, yeah, actually, I've been talking. If I don't get to Spain, I can go by car with just with the with the coronavirus test. I can go there and get the visa. So I have been planning with the friends from Russia if I could go there to practice with them when my shoulder is okay. So I I'm working on pretty many different plans right now to get to ride with summer tires because they also have a part in South of russia where it's like ramps and stuff so i would like to go there if i can't go to spain oh down in cyprus yes not not cyprus but yeah in south ah, yeah. okay ah, <laughs> yeah. okay i thought they had one there as well oh maybe they do i know they've got a they've got that southern yeah training compound man it, it's somewhere near so short or somewhere so ah that's awesome mate it was awesome to chat to you um I I really can't wait to get back on the road and uh, and get to some more events with you and uh, yeah just have fun again traveling the world it's that's I love it I, I love it I'm by the sounds of it you love it too yeah thanks man for inviting me and it was super cool to catch up with you for a pretty long chat actually hey, this is a short but, one yeah. we could have gone a lot longer <laughs> actually before you go uh are you running the seb fest uh in 2021 yeah yeah that will be the third of july next year so yeah perfect there will happen and hopefully we get all the guys from abroad also this year was a finnish fest but but we used to have riders from everywhere so let's see Maybe you you're coming with Rachel. Yeah, I, <laughs> so we can chat right. I would love to jump in the van and do a hell of a road trip up to yeah, just come to Finland and do all the Scandinavian countries. So we, I've got a whole bunch of timber that I uh, got from Night of the Jumps from their storage actually. So I'll try and fit out the van, make it into a bit of a camper, and uh, and jump in. Actually, the funny thing was that now things are starting to come back to me that we were talking about Russia. When I rode with you uh, at that show, that Adrenaline Rush show, uh, yeah. that was the second time I drove to Russia. And I think in that year, I drove 120,000 kilometers uh, twice to Russia, like 10 times to England and all around Europe. And, and it was awesome. I loved it. And I thought, <laughs> not that bad. <laughs> was, yeah, no, I love driving. And we had a pretty crappy volkswagen t5 van and i could start to feel the clutch was going uh I'd probably done 250 or a bit more thousand kilometers and so yeah i bought a brand new ford transit custom van i don't think i'd ever bought a brand new car before uh and i basically did it because if i'm driving back to russia i want to go back there in comfort because it's a long drive from germany to there i think it's like 35 40 hours something like that driving so yeah i guess i probably won't be doing that for shows anymore but i would love to just fit out that van make it into a bit of a camper and uh i'll come up and see you in finland instead in uh in what was it july 3rd for the next yeah third. yeah yeah the first weekend perfect right that's yeah. that's my goal i am gonna get out of the apartment or out of the house i'm gonna build my camper i'm gonna come up and see you guys there 
Oh, good. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, man. And uh, good luck with uh, Street Bike or Dirt Bike versus Street Bike 4. Sounds like it'll be another big one. Yeah, hopefully people will find it out there. And uh, yeah, I get back to ride, <laughs> not just watching the, the views on YouTube. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, mate. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thanks, man. Hear you soon. Cheers. Thanks so much to the Finnish rider, Sebastian Westberg, for taking the time to talk to us about everything in freestyle motocross that he's learned up until this point and where he's going into the future. And from one Finn to another, it's my man, Auntie from Lakes Networking, who I met when he was working at the office in Australia with Papa Jace and the team. He's moved back to his motherland of Finland and has almost finished designing my new website for this very podcast. And to be honest, I didn't think when I first started this podcast series that I would even bother with a website. I have access to make it happen. That's not a problem. But I didn't really see the need to use up resources on building it. Like, why would I need to? But the more I've learned by talking with guys like Seb about how YouTube works and other writers or industry folk on their experiences with social media and its link to websites and the link between all of them. I figured, you know what? I need to do all the right things if this Riders Lounge podcast can grow and bring more fans of motocross and freestyle and action sports into our orbit. I'm just doing this for fun, but I do have the tools to create this series from my real work in voiceovers and TV hosting, which is so cool, but why not make it more visible to everyone and build the community around it? And one way that Rothaus wanted to help the series to build and to grow, which is I absolutely love them for, was helping with this promotion of free beer. And I mean, that's awesome at any time to get free beer, but the giveaway of the mini kegs once we hit the 1,000 followers on Instagram, which I truly appreciate. And we're almost there. So if you jump on now, you'll probably still just have a chance to win some free beer. And I'll put the link directly to that promotion in the show description. And actually, I do want to say a big thanks to the mysterious entity that is FMX Funnies, who have been making some awesome FMX related memes on Insta lately but also making a couple for the guests on this show, such as Levi and now Seb Westberg. Whoever's running that page is doing a bang-up job, so I recommend you check that out for a laugh and see which other riders they'll take the piss out of next. Thank you to my sponsors, Spect Eyewear, with the comfiest goggles I've ever worn, or at least that I remember wearing because I'm just an old man. And I also want to thank Custom MX, Motorex Oils, GB Orthopedics, DEP Pipes, TCX Boots, and Race FX. And to finish off the thank you notes, I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in, who have sent in your messages, who have asked questions, and have shared the podcast. I really appreciate it, and it's helped it grow already so much until this point. So thank you very much, and we'll see you again next time on the Riders Lounge Podcast. Oh, my God.